Hello and welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. I'm Allison Donnelly. And I'm Rob Churnside and it's April the 16th. We're coming up on Earth Day. And this is our Earth Day show. Yes. Lots going on. Yeah. So we have, we're covering a couple of events tonight, but you just mentioned to me this river cleanup, or river sweep. Yeah, I happen to have a piece of paper right here. The Susquehanna River Sweep down there in Perryville, taking care of the Susquehanna, which dumps three quarters of the water, fresh water into the Chesapeake Bay. Very important. So that's on Saturday, so you can get all pumped about um, proper um, disposal of your household rubbish and other materials. That's uh, Sunday, ha Hazard right. Choice Day. Yeah. Right. Great. Um, what will you be doing this weekend? All of these things? Well, I try to save the planet every day, but <laughs> this particular Sunday I'll be going to Hazardous Household Waste Day with my truck loaded up with paint and stuff like that. And uh, I'll probably uh, go next week to prescription drug take back day. Right, right, because we were just talking about how if you improperly dispose of various medicines, it can get, um, it can pollute the waters and get in the hands of the wrong people. Yeah, that's the 28th. Right. So we're gonna save the planet here, at Cecil TV and Cecil County. Exactly. And now for the news. In last month's spending bill, Congress earmarked $380 million for the election reform program, which aims to improve election system infrastructure and security. Maryland could receive just over $7 million of that money if Governor Hogan decides to put forth the mandated 5% match. Maryland's nine Democratic lawmakers in Congress signed a letter last week asking Governor Hogan to allocate funds for that 5% match. He has until April 20th to respond. The Maryland General Assembly's 2018 session came to a close early last week. Of the 3,101 bills introduced over the course of 90 days, a total of 889 were passed. As a result of one such bill, voters will decide this November on a constitutional amendment mandating that casino revenue will be spent only on K-12 education. The Cecil County Council is accepting applications from citizens seeking appointment to the Cecil County Animal Care and Control Advisory Board. The appointed citizen will join three other county officials and another citizen appointed by the county executive. The board reviews existing state and local policies and oversees animal care and control services in Cecil County. Interested citizens may obtain an application on the county's website. Application deadline is April 27th. National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is April 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., at which time Cecil County residents can turn in unused or expired medications, no questions asked, for safe disposal at several locations. Participating collection sites include the Cecil County Sheriff's Office, the Maryland State Police, Northeast and JFK Highway Barracks, as well as the Elkton, Northeast, Perryville, and Rising Sun Police Departments. Two important indicators for evaluating su success of our school systems are graduation rates and dropout rates. The Cecil County Public Schools recently released its Spring 2018 newsletter, which cites, among many other things, the Maryland State Department of Education's data for the class of 2017. According to the data, Cecil County maintained a flat graduation rate of 90.54%, which exceeds the statewide graduation rate of 87.67%. Additionally, the county's dropout rate reached a record low of 7.25%, down from nearly 15% in 2010. The newsletter highlights the gains among black and African American and special education subgroups in particular. The dropout rate among black and African American students dropped from 11.3% to 8% from 2016 to 2017. And the dropout rate among special education students declined from 18.3% to 12.31% from 2016 to 2017. Please note that now that County Executive McCarthy has submitted his proposed budget, the Council will deliberate and hold hearings for the next two months. Don't forget to visit www.ccgov.org for the full schedule of hearings. If you are a woman starting your own business, or if you already own a business, Sign up for the 2018 Powerful Women in Business Seminar, sponsored by Women in Defense and New York Life, on Wednesday, May 2nd, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the top of the bay on Aberdeen Proving Ground. Register online at www.widmidatlantic.org.
This is your Cecil TV evening forecast for Tuesday, April 17th. The National Weather Service says that tonight will be cloudy during the early evening, then gradually clearing. The low temperature will be around 35, and there will be a west wind at 7 to 9 miles per hour. Tomorrow will be sunny, with a high near 59, and west wind at 8 to 11 miles per hour. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to Cecil TV's 30 at 6. I'm here with Jen Lyle. She's the Public Information Officer for Cecil County Government, and she's here to talk to us about Trash Bash 2018. Jen, thanks for joining thanks. us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, what is the goal of Trash Bash, and how did it get started? Um, well, about six weeks ago, the County Executive um, McCarthy and Council President Joyce Bowlesby uh, stopped me in the hallway in the, well, at work and said, we really need to come up with an initiative to get rid of um, um, some of the litter and trash along the roadways, just wherever you go, there's just too much trash. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they kind of gave me this task, and about a week later, I came up with the logo and um, started blasting it all over the place. We really just want people to get out and... Um, in their neighborhoods, their churches, their sports fields, and pick up with the trash that they mm -hmm. see. Um, just, you know, to help, Cecil County is such a gorgeous place to live, and it's just, um, if we can get the trash picked up, it would just really help us make the place even prettier. Totally agree. So this is the first trash bash yes, ever. Yes, yes. Well, that's the pretty first exciting of for you. First of many, so. So what advice do you have for citizens who are looking to participate like as far as safety and, and handling of trash so we really just want people to get their families and friends and um, their groups their neighborhood sports teams together walk out your front doors go to your the little league fields um, public places um, and pick up the trash we don't want any kids on the sides of roads without okay. adults or anything like that um, safety is always first but um, yeah, it's just about getting together, taking you know the kids, picking up trash, and re just depositing um, those items in your home receptacles. Mm -hmm. um, just to clean up and make make things look better. That's all. But people don't need to sign up in any official way. No, it's very low key. It's just about just getting together and doing it. There's no sign up. There's no registration. Nothing like that. Cool. So one thing. Um, that's important for people to note is that when they collect trash around their houses, they can't immediately bring it to the landfill. Exactly. So what what can they bring to the landfill? Because it's also has household hazardous waste day. So household hazardous waste day at the landfill is specifically for hazardous waste, pool chemicals, paint, wood stains, mm -hmm. um, pesticides, those sorts of things. Um, there's so much going on on that day at the landfill. Right. There's just it, they just cannot deal with regular trash so yeah it's just about those sorts of chemicals and those things so cool have you gotten a lot of feedback from potential yeah I do I have lots of um a couple of high school sports teams are going to participate I have a Cub Scout group out of Conowingo who's excited about coming um, I, I've gotten a, a handful of people who um, already have their groups together I've gotten calls and calls and calls from lots of folks who want to know what it's about and where they can go and I, it's really just important to say you know go where you want to go make sure you're on not on private property or anything <laughs> but right. um, just get out in your neighborhoods and do and do the right thing. That's what it's all about. So, uh, Trash Bash is um, Sunday, April twenty second. Mm -hmm. And where can people learn more? Um, on our website, it's www.ccgov.org, um, or you can give me a call at the office. It's 410-996-8454. Um, I'm always there. Well, not always, but I'll always return your call. Um, but yeah, there's lots. Lots of things that um, you can get involved with, so. That's great. Thanks. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? <laughs> Oh no, the furnace is on the fridge again! This time I'm calling the new guy. Wow, he's here already? At your service! There you go! 
Mission accomplished. Uh, uh, our our house, house is nice and warm again. again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Allison Donnelly for Cecil.tv. I'm here at the Northeast High School last production of Legally Blonde. I'm here with Neil DeMatt, um, and you're playing Warner, correct? Yep. yep. And how are you feeling going into your last performance? Emotional. <laughs> um, it's uh, this this rock club, drama club has done so much for me, and it's just um, really got me out of my show, and I'm just I'm ready to put on a great show tonight. That's awesome. And so, what are your future plans? Um, I'm going over to Cecil College. Um, I'm studying secondary education, uh, history, and, and hopefully the theater. And um, this, uh, after that, maybe Towson University, and then hopefully come back here and teach. Awesome. Mm. We'll break a leg. All right, thank you. Sophie, who's your character? Uh, I'm playing Grandmaster Chad. What is that? So um, when Elle is studying for her LSATs, there's a group of frat boys that run on, and I'm the one, like the lead frat boy, so I go on the stage and do a little dance, and, and I sing a little bit. Um, that's me. That sounds really fun. <laughs> oh, it's a blast. It's my favorite role so far, definitely. So what are your feelings going to the last show? Uh, I'm going to be honest. So I'm a senior. It, it hasn't really quite hit me yet that this is the last time I'll be here on this right. stage with these people. Um, and I don't know when it's going to hit, so hopefully it's not when I'm on stage <laughs> because that could be really bad. Um, but, yeah, I, I know that I have faith in this cast and the people, and, you know, a lot of them are my friends. Um, so I, just, I, I have confidence that we'll go into this knowing that it's our last performance and put everything into it. Awesome. Yep. Thanks. Well. I'm with Sam. So, Sam, this is your first production, correct? Yes. So what was it like, this is your first play, what was the steps like, did the seniors help you out a lot, what did you have to do, was it a lot to learn? Um, it was a lot to learn, but it was really fun doing it, and I just have an interest in theater, so it's really enjoyable on my part. Um, and it's like really nerve-wracking being right. up there, but um, I think the nerves kind of encouraged me to put my all into it, and I, in my opinion, everything's ending up really well. And this has been your third show correct to uh, tonight um, like as oh, in yes. for legally yeah. bond and uh, how is this compared to uh, the first show which was Friday night um ooh, uh, we've it's just small mistakes that we make every single time but right. we fix them and then we kind of improv some things but I don't know it does end up working out really nicely and everybody enjoys it awesome there you have it I'm here with Lizzie who plays Elle she's the star of the show uh, Lizzie, what, is that, what has that been like? It's been incredibly nerve-wracking. This is the biggest production we've done at the school so far, and this is the first time I've played the main, and it's it's just been really scary, kind of, but also very, very fun. So is this the biggest role you've played in, in all of the other theater that you've done? Yeah, I think because this is a really big show. Will you pursue theater in after high school? I don't think so. I'm going into a different field. Okay, cool. We'll break a leg. Thanks. I'm here with Mrs. Fritz, the director for Legally Blonde. And the biggest question is, this is a pretty senior-heavy staff, and one of them even being the choreographer, Abby Prinkerton. How are you going to prepare for the next group of kids for the upcoming years? Losing our choreographer is going to be an enormous loss for us. Right. Abby's been with us for four years, so I'm not at this point sure how I'm going to fill her shoes. I think it's going to take a couple of dancers, actually, freshmen, right. who are going to have to work into that. We're also losing kids who have been in every show since they were freshmen. Um, so they're looking at eight shows now worth of experience. So even though our program has grown tremendously, losing those eight seniors does leave a big hole for us. Why should you advertise on Cecil.tv? Because it is a totally new and unique way to reach the thousands of viewers that watch our programming. Plus, you'll be helping us grow as we expand our coverage. 
We have exciting plans and your business or organization can be part of it. You will find our packages and rates to be refreshingly affordable and we'll work with you to create a fresh and dynamic ad that says and shows what your business is about. Ask us how to get your commercial produced for free. So contact us on our website, Cecil.tv, or send an email to info at Cecil.tv. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kitty McKitty for Cecil.tv, and I am here with Tanya Adams. Hi, Tanya. Would you like to tell us what we're doing today? Well, uh, sure. Um, I'm Tanya Adams, a recycling manager for Cecil County, and we're here today to go over some do's and don'ts of single stream recycling. Single stream recycling means that all the recycles go together in one bin, and recently, in the past couple years, we've gone bagless with single stream recycling. So you okay. want to put that loose in the bin. Okay, so that, that is important to know. So regular plastic bags, even maybe these kind of plastic bags no longer allowed no longer allowed you don't want to put them in your curbside recycling container you can bring them bagged here to the recycling center at the central landfill where we're at um when you bring them in we just ask you to unbag them and when put them in the container that we have available for the recyclables okay great so let's go over some of the do's of recycling right now because i know there's been some changes in the past couple years that people might not know about Correct. We've gotten much more strict with our recycling, and that is um, in order for us to eliminate contamination in the recyclables and increase the value of the recyclables. It's also to prevent um, dangerous things from going into the recycling plant and hurting the workers there. So some of the things that you want to put in your recycling bin are what I call the traditional recyclables people think about. That's your cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. It's your junk mail. Lots of, um, that. lots of that snack uh, boxes have a lot of those in my house also uh, your cereal boxes cereal boxes are fine the boxes uh, of food that are not okay to put in your recyclables are your frozen food boxes because they have a waxy coating to them so it's harder for them to be broken down and made into new paper items okay but speaking of food boxes we were talking about pizza boxes there is a rule for those yes there is pizza boxes the rule about pizza boxes is if it has grease on it, it's okay, and if it has cheese, throw it away. We don't want pizza boxes with crust in them and cheese. That's food contamination. But if it just has a grease stain, that's fine. Just leave it in. Okay, good to know. Now, I also asked you about other items that some people kind of go back and forth. They don't know which is which. Things like Q-tips. You said things like that used to put in, but now you don't? Well, the rule used to be when in doubt, put it in. But now the rule is when in doubt, throw it out. And Q-tips, um, that's one of the things I call the ick factor. If it is uh, a tissue, tissues are another problem um, that you would wipe your nose with or wipe your hands on. It's kind of germy and kind of yucky or icky. Uh, if it's something like that, of course, Q-tips, earwax, you want to throw that in the trash. Okay, good to know. So now that we have some of our dues down, oh, one more thing about the dues. Uh, it used to be back where I lived that magazines were a big no-no. You said that has changed though. Yes, magazines such as that there. one, absolutely fine. Staples in them are fine. Staples on any paper do not have to be removed. Also inserts in newspapers people ask about a lot. They are allowable in the recycling as well. And what about like spiral bound notebooks? Do those need broken down? No, you don't have to worry about the wire in a spiral notebook. Um, the only other thing that would be similar to that would be hardback books we cannot take rip the covers off of them, soft back books we can. Okay, good. So now that we kind of have our new dues, let's come over here and talk about some of the don'ts, things that people might put in for recycling that either shouldn't be here or sometimes are just downright dangerous. Uh, absolutely. The biggest thing and the biggest change in recycling are plastic bags. Plastic bags cause a huge problem at the plant because they get wrapped around the arms of the equipment and then the workers are sent in each shift with hatchets to actually chop them out. Oh. So it's, um, it's a big danger to the equipment for breakdown. It's a big danger to the employees at the recycling plant as well. Okay. Um, so that's the biggest change. Also, uh, this. This would probably be the most dangerous thing that you can put through a recycling plant. It's a propane canister. Um, this one, even empty, it can cause a problem because it's under pressure. Uh, we have had one recycling plant in the U.S. burn down because of a propane tank going through it and causing an explosion, oh a fire. My. So this is definitely a no-no. Okay. What else do we have in here? Um, another problem uh, that we have are chemical containers, empty chemical containers. This is motor oil. Um, we do have motor oil recycling for drop-off here, but motor oil containers do not go in your curbside recycling. Um, the problem is, is that they have residue inside them that gets on the paper and contaminates the paper so it can't be recycled. So those okay. you definitely want to leave out. Got it. 
Um, another problem we have is scrap metal. This actually came out of recycling load. This can go through the recycling plant and actually become a projectile and hurt one of the workers. Oh, okay, that's definitely good to know. Just like a javelin. Another wow. issue we have, uh, the recycling plant, same as the bags. We do have uh, clothing recycling for drop-off here and at our Woodlawn Transfer Station. However, it's separate. It's a separate drop-off. And so when you get clothing like this in with the recyclables, when it goes around the wheels at the recycling plant, it gets caught in them. Same as the bags and even tougher to chop out with a hatchet. Okay. So no clothing. Clothing, donate to your church or bring in here for a separate drop-off. All right. Oh, and then we did have a few special rules about things, such as some glasses are recyclable and some isn't. Would you mind telling us more about that? Correct. It's spring cleaning time, so if you're cleaning out um, candy jars from your home, they go in the trash. They melt at a higher temperature, so it's harder to recycle them. Also, same with drinking glasses. But your Snapple bottles, your wine bottles, your beer bottles, you can still recycle all of those. Okay, and you also said that there is a crush rule for aluminum cans now? There is. There is a crush rule, and it's uh, not just for aluminum cans, but also plastic bottles. Okay. If you just have a little indentation like this one on your can or your plastic bottle, it's perfectly fine. But if you crush them completely flat, flat, and I'm sure I don't have the strength to do this, <laughs> I mean, really flat like a pancake, you know, the plant will recognize that as paper, and the cans will end up contaminating the paper bales. So you don't want it completely flat. Little dents, fine. Okay, and then uh, something you mentioned with the clothing that I forgot about, we do have a special, uh, what is it, charitable donation that you do here. Yes, we work with a company called BraRecycling.com. This is a separate drop-off at all three of our locations here in our two transfer stations. And um, we ship these bras to BraRecycling.com, and they donate those to various charitable organizations, um, shelters, um, and also to victims of hurricanes like Hurricane Katrina. And if they can't recycle the bras, they make them into the softest carpet padding ever. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, so any final words of wisdom that you have for our fellow green people here in Cecil County? Probably when you're in doubt with recycling, remember the ick factor. If it's going to stink in three days, do not put it in your recycling bin. Put it in the trash. All right. Well, Tanya, thank you so much for our, your help. Well, thank you so much for coming out. All right. This is Tanya Adams, and thank you. And everyone, please remember, get out there and do your best to celebrate Earth Day, not just one day, but all year round. It's the only Earth we have, people. Thanks. Oh, oh no. The furnace is on the fridge again. This time, I'm calling the moon. <laughs> wow. He's here already? At your service. <laughs> There you go! Mission accomplished! Ah, huh. Our house is nice and warm again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome! You're welcome! Just go to moonairinc.com! Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? And now continuing to save the earth, Welcome, Cliff Engel, Chief of the Solid Waste Division of Cecil County. Cliff, welcome to 30 at 6. Hey, thank you for having us. And this is the big day, Sunday, right? Sunday is. It's Household Hazardous Waste Day, uh, which basically is our event that we hold once a year. Uh, residents of the county can bring items from their houses that are basically considered household hazardous waste, which would be items we normally would not take for disposal. It's anything from latex paints, pesticides and herbicides are a very popular category. Uh, old gasoline, stale gasoline, things of that sort. Uh, again, these are items that we normally don't have uh, programs for during the year that are very difficult uh, to manage and difficult to recycle. And uh, we just try to do this every year to, you know, for two purposes. One is to keep these items out of the waste stream, you know, out of the sewers, out of your septic tanks, which is where they definitely don't belong. Right. Uh, but it also is an opportunity to educate, uh, which is something we try to do a lot of with our division. Uh, is educate the public in, in proper ways or alternatives uh, to throwing things out. You know, we may be at the solid waste division, but that doesn't mean we're throwing all the way division. No, the recycling is a big part. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, Cecil TV was actually did a piece on recycling, maybe t uh, on tonight's show, Monday.
But um, this is really a recycling project because yes, many of these things are recycled with uh, bona fide companies that that take yes, care they of are. these hazardous yes, stuff, they are. materials. Yes, they are. We have a, a one main company that comes in and they've done it for now for uh, for several years called Clean Harbors. I don't know if we're allowed to. Uh, pump a company or not, but uh, they That's do a phenomenal, right. phenomenal job. And many of the materials that they do take in are recycled. They, they can be blended into other fuels. Uh, they can be blended into different oils. Uh, some of the oils that we take, especially uh, ones that can be re-refined. Uh, you, you buy motor oil that's recycled motor oil. Uh, sometimes this, these materials can be made into those. Uh, the small amount that cannot be uh, are treated properly. Uh, some of that's through certain methods of incineration, other other means that are far, far more environmentally secure uh, than just, again, putting it in the landfill or doing something else with it. Now, in lieu of going to this free event, Cliff, uh, I go to the Woodlong uh, yes. transfer station. They have a receptacle there <clears throat> for me to put my used motor oil. Correct. Is used motor oil something we should bring this day? Or? You can bring it if you've been saving it up, uh, but, it, but again, used oil, used antifreeze, uh, those are materials that we can take in six days a week uh, at any of the facilities. So you don't necessarily need to save it up to bring it in just on HHW a day. That could be, right. you know, that could be any day during the week. And throughout the county, how many facilities other than the main landfill do you have? We have the two. We have our Woodlawn Transfer Station in Kalora. Uh, we also have our Stemmers Run Transfer Station on the Eastern Shore. Right. Uh, the operating hours at the transfer stations are a little different than the landfill, but typically at 7.30 or 8 to 3.30 at the landfill and, and 4 o'clock at the transfer stations. One thing I do want to emphasize for our HHW day on Sunday is those hours are 7.30 to 3. So the scale normally closes at 3.30 or the gate closes at 3.30. For this event, it closes at 3 o'clock. So we ask the residents that we're going to uh, come and bring their material in to definitely be in before 3. Best hours are really from 10 to 1. Uh, there's always a crush in the morning and a crush in the afternoon. Right, and it, I've waited in line a bit, but it was mm -hmm. worth the wait because when I got up to the where the action was, it was very well organized. You had volunteers. Yes. They took. They said, "What's this? What's that?" And they took it and they separated it all. And I felt like I was doing something for the environment. It, it is a very, very, very good uh, event. We used to hold two events a year. Um, one of the challenges that we have uh, as our division. Uh, we're what's called an enterprise fund, so we don't take tax dollars. We have to conduct our operations at all of our facilities based on the fees that we take in at the landfills. And that's something that not everyone in the public knows, and, and it's kind of misunderstood. Uh, and we used to have the two. The, each event is about a $60,000 event. Uh, so for us to do $120,000 a year conducting two events, it, right now anyway, uh, is, is financially stressful, but at least we can do the one, and our commitment is to do at least the one a year. And I'm so glad. Let me ask you one question. Sure. Batteries, car batteries, regular flashlight batteries, you take them this day? Uh, <clears throat> car batteries we take in every day anyway. Uh -huh. uh, same with rechargeable batteries. Uh, one thing that's unfortunate anymore is regular recharge, or not rechargeable, regular battery one-use batteries. Your Duracells, Everettis, whatever you buy, the alkaline batteries. Uh, they are recyclable, but one of the nice things with batteries today is they've taken a lot of those old nasty things out. Well, those nasty things in those batteries had value, and that's why they used to be recyclable. Today, they're really not. So uh, there are programs out there through different organizations where residents can independently uh, recycle your throwaway batteries. Uh, we unfortunately don't offer that at the facility because it is such an expensive program right, to right. run. Well, I'll tell you what. It's... You go to the transfer station. I always separate. It only costs seven bucks. You show your license mm -hmm. to make sure you're a county resident. And with my truck, and I don't have a full bed truck, I can go for three weeks. Certainly. And get everything all organized. So it's pretty economical to do the right thing. It is. And that's one of the reasons we have that graduated uh, rate structure. It's $14 if it's a full load of trash, but it's $7 if you've brought in particularly your single stream recyclables, the cans and bottles and things we generate at home. Uh, that's the reason for doing that, that split rate, is it, it, it's an incentive you know, for the residents to do that. It really doesn't take much effort no. you know, to do that, uh, to separate out. Uh, things should be as clean as you can get them or as, things as, uh, as clean as you want to get them. Uh, if you have a lot of food in the jars, you know, cheese on the pizza boxes, you know, they, they won't accept those. Uh, but just a little bit of rinsing and a little bit of sorting uh, will, will go a long way. It goes a long way in your rate coming in, but it also goes a long way to making sure that those materials are processed properly. So do your best and throw out the rest. That's a good, a good phrase. We'd have to take yeah. that one. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. See you Sunday.
We'll be there.